We have arrived in Gal on the south coast of Sri Lanka after a long journey from Badula. We're going to show you all the best things to do in and around this historic city right in this video. Come with us and check it out. As you'll notice from the end of the previous video, uh, we had to make a slight change of plan. We have taken a car and a driver from Badula to Gal. Yes, change uh, of plan, but these things happen, it's okay. Cloud as a silver lining just stopped. So we've gone through Ella, which looks really nice, small town. Not sure yeah. there's a great deal to do, but it looks nice to have a wander around some food. Come down, there's a place called Ravana Falls, beautiful waterfall um, just at the side of the road. A few little snack stalls, you can buy some sweet corn and uh, some bananas. Feed the monkeys if you want. Lucy loves a monkey. One for the ladies. So, we're going to jump back in the car, head towards Gal, book to hotel, next to the beach, and chill there for a day and see if we can recover enough to spend the last week in Sri Lanka beach bound. Yeah. Also got a surprise for the next video, um, watch to the end if you want to know what that is. We have arrived in Galay. Does it matter? We've arrived in Galay, or Gal, or Gol, or Ghoul, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely not Ghoul. We arrived in Gal, or Galay, or not quite sure how it's pronounced, everybody seems to pronounce it slightly differently. And we're in the fort area, which is a old fort from the 1800s. Um, it's a preserved area, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. A lot of the buildings have been refurnished and redone, and they're all white and full of arches. Um, opposite is, is one of the two churches. We are at All Saints Church in Gal on Church Street. It was built in 1868 and then commemorated in 1871 and opened as a church. It's built on the site of the former Gal Courthouse and execution grounds. The former hanging gallows are now where the present altar is. So we're going to have a little look inside. This is the church bell for the All Saints Church just over there. Don't know why it's not inside the church. Makes sense to put it there, but you know, each to their own. It's now raining. <laughs> Directly across from the church bell is a Galley library. A uh, beautiful little library, open to members only. However, if you want to pay 100 rupees to have a look around, that's the fee to get inside. Well worth looking at. Also on Church Street is the Crook Church or the Dutch Reformed Church. So this was built in 1755 and is one of the oldest Protestant, Protestant churches in the country that is still in use today. Let's go inside and have a look.
just went to go in the library anyway and she said it's 200 not 100 although it clearly says 100 on the window and you can't take any pictures or film inside but it looks really nice if you want to go and have a look around see so all this library in Sri Lanka built in 1832 a couple of beautiful churches nice little churchyard also we're gonna walk our way yeah. down no no, no thank, thank you, you boss Constant <laughs> harassment for tuk tuks. <laughs> There's so many of them, and they all, even if you're just trying to, if you're out of one and you're just crossing the road, they still want to offer you another ride. So. But like, no, thank you. Should do the trick, unfortunately, it doesn't. No, I'm going to talk to you about where you're from. A little bit firm about saying, no, thank you, which me likes to talk to people, so it doesn't really work, but I am a bit firm, stern, so they tend to give up. So I'm just going to walk down the road just across from the church, a couple of hundred metres is the Maritime Museum of Sri Lanka. The Maritime Museum is located in the old Dutch warehouse that was built in 1640. Yeah. Um, the museum then later opened in 1992, but unfortunately was completely destroyed in the 2004 tsunami. Which was a disaster for Gal in general, one of the worst areas. We'll tell you a little bit more about that when we get to the coast. We didn't go inside the Maritime Museum, uh, but the fee is 550 rupees to get inside, which is around $1.50 or £1.25 UK. Directly across from the Maritime Museum is probably Sri Lanka's smallest fuel station. There's only one way into Galfort. It's between us! <laughs> and it's there. Looks as like it's the way out also, but it can't possibly be the way out, it's the way in. Well, this side's the way in, the other side's the way out. So it's not the way in and out? Yeah, it's the same bridge, it's the same way in and out. Anyway, there is the British coat of arms above it, and 1868, which is when it was built and opened. And locked for the first time. Yeah, the doors have been taken off for restoration, it says. I'm not sure how they were trying to keep out, but um, it's not working anymore because there's no doors left. Maybe they need to give the Russians out. Directly across the road from the fort entrance are uh, what used to be, I think, the old docks. A um, few naval relics, maritime relics, a big anchor. I think now more a source of entertainment for Sri Lankan teenagers. Actually, what's happening is there's some kids learning to swim. I don't think that the, the, the methodology is correct. But they tie a rope around a child, throw him into the water, and hope he survives. And if he doesn't, they just drag him in by the rope. Um, I'm not sure that works. There's also a very small, rather nice beach that you could probably take your shoes and socks off and have a little paddle. Cool your feet from the humid Sri Lankan sun beating down at 33 degrees today. This is quite probably the largest anchor I have ever seen in my entire life. Left here during the construction of the RMS Titanic, which was built in Sri Lanka, and then sent to Southampton where it sank. Probably due to the weight of this anchor. By the way, Titanic wasn't built in Sri Lanka. Just a little joke, you know what I mean? Joke. Also next to the fort gates, there are a couple of local Sri Lankan restaurants. Some Sri Lankan locals eating by the docks always tells you the food's really good. So this, Lucy. Yeah, this is the exit on the this other is, side of the This entrance. is the way out. Yeah, on the other side of the entrance. We're going to get back. Another way out of the fort area. One way in, which was the other one. One way out, which is this one. Just to, not the same same, just to clarify.
just outside the fourth entrance, there is a small market selling lots of local antiques, etc. Some authentic um, and some probably not. However, we came across one store, there's a young guy, he's a local artist, he has some beautiful things on his store. His name is Vasika. It's the guy. Take four. And everything's original, he's all made paintings, uh, beads, postcards, fridge magnets. Suggest if you come to the market, come and pay this guy a visit and spend a few dollars. It's also a good cause. He's also a dog lover if you like a dog. Um, some of the charity, some of the proceeds go to charity. Um, very beautiful store and all original. Well worth a look. Directly next to the market, there is a local restaurant. So they also do cooking classes, it's called Mamas. Uh, really nice, funny old lady, very big personality, very good character. Um, we just bought a cooking book, we don't have time to do the cooking class, but we just bought a cooking book if you want to sign it. Um, VIP, but it looks really good. It's a two hour class, it's $30, which is about 8,000 rupees, maybe 9,000. You get a certificate after the class, they cook about nine or ten different dishes. Tuna fish, dal curry, mango chutney, this is a big size okay. Just put small size, big size, different dish, just put curry. This is a pumpkin curry. Now your morning glory. Which you can eat after they've been cooked. If we were staying a little bit longer, we would do it ourselves. Looks fantastic, authentic, and a good insight into Sri Lankan food. I think, unlike a lot of places where you go, a lot of the art and the craft work in Gale, in Gal, is genuinely authentic. You go a lot of places and it's fake stuff from China, etc., etc. But a lot of this, I think, is genuinely made here by the people who are selling it. So I always advise to put some money back into the community where you go to. And oops, I'm gonna break my neck on this rope. We're just working our way now down to the fort walls. The old cannon, there's a shopping precinct here as well. And see a little bit of the seaside. is the Aurora Bastion which is the east facing one and the smallest out of all along the fort walls. Beautiful view all across the bay. Oh, so the bastion that where the cannons were that were used to protect the fort. Okay, just next to the lighthouse is a beautiful golden sandy beach with some blue, blue sea. I am now very happy because I've had my toes in and I've been through a paddle. A wave just got me and soaked my trainers thoroughly. Oh, funny. Well, yeah, come here, maybe bring a beer to the beach, make some food, sit by the shore under some trees in the shade for an hour, pass away a little bit of the day. Small beach, few locals here. It was beautiful. Very nice beach, as you can see. Shallow also, good for swimming. Well worth a visit while you're in Gal Fort. Also a few locals selling some drinks and small snacks. Yeah, just bring some food, some snacks, some drinks, and enjoy some beautiful Indian Ocean sea under some palm trees with that view to look at. Beautiful, amazing. There's also some toilets, male and female changing rooms also on the beach. So you can get changed into your swimsuit or your bikini and enjoy the water. All along the beach there are piles and piles of beautiful coral. It's come from somewhere and it's sad to see that it's dead, but amazing. Just got my feet wet again. Absolutely not fun. So all the way around Gal Fort are the fort walls. They are about 10, 15 feet high. Um, protecting the fort from 
all um, all assailants really. Gal was one of the most badly affected parts of Sri Lanka during the tsunami in 2004 which um, killed 35,000 inhabitants. Very sad. Ironically the walls that have been here for 400, 500 years stood firm and they didn't even budge. A feat of 500 year old engineering. Fell down now and got even wetter. Happy days. The road we're walking down now is Peddler Street, which is one of the main shopping streets. Lots of little boutiques, loads of cafes and restaurants, and it dissects the port area from one side to the east to the west. So the hotel that we stayed in Gala Fort is called the Archers Fort. So it's a renovated Dutch colonial building. Rooms are beautiful. Little outside seating area. Rooms are very nice. Beautiful private bathroom. Breakfast good. Um, beautiful building. The manager, owner, really helpful. This is a gentleman here. Okay. Very helpful and the high. Yes. Please come in. Highly, I just call. Highly recommended place to stay if you are in Gaul. Beautiful. Thank you. Just came back to our hotel to have a beautiful lemon iced tea. Get out of the sun for 10 minutes and cool down. So I've first made at the hotel 550 rupees. Finish these off, cool down, and we'll go and see the rest of what Gal has to offer. Cricket is a big thing in Sri Lanka and India and Asia in general. So behind me is the Gal Cricket Ground. It's one of the oldest cricket grounds in the world. The oldest in Sri Lanka, opened in 1876. Um, if you like cricket, come down, check it out, have a look inside. Sri Lankan team not doing so well these days, but in history, a fantastic team. Come and check the ground out if you're passing. It's also the most picturesque cricket ground in the world because it's next to the sea. One of the things to come and see is the Gal Lighthouse, uh, onshore lighthouse. It's the oldest lighthouse in Sri Lanka, opened in 1843. I think somewhere else in Gal, there is a the site of the old lighthouse from the like 1700s, I believe. But this one well worth a visit, just next to the beach. I'm not sure if you can go up it or not. Uh, it looks like you can actually. But I'll check that out, I'll leave some link in the description box below. I'll tell you the fees if you have to pay. Also behind me there are some snake charmers, guys got, there's a few of them around in Gal. This guy's got a cobra, a king cobra and some kind of python. It wants to wrap it around your neck, play a flute for the cobra to be out of the basket. Just seeing one guy, I love just seeing one guy give him some money to see the cobra and he's just told him no, that's not enough money. So I don't like going right for a cobra, but um, come and check it out if that's what you want to do. It's more than three dollars apparently. <laughs> Cheap price to die.
from the lighthouse is a place called Flag Rock. Flag Rock Bastion, uh, pre-lighthouse being built, it was a place where people would stand with lights and flags and muskets to warn all the ships from the rocks. You also jump from here, it's a company called Crazy Jumpers. Not convinced looking over the side that there is anywhere, anywhere at all that you'd like to jump from into the water. Especially this guy over here is a braver man than me. Maybe Lucy do it. Lucy likes jumping up high things. Um, check out our video for um, absolutely no idea where we were. Sikiho, we were when, in the Philippines. Sikiho in the Philippines, we were when Lucy jumps off a 25 meter high thing into a very shallow pool. But just look at this. It's not a place to jump. But I'll leave a link in the description box below for the company that does the jumps should you want to try it out yourself. However, it is worth coming up to Flag Rock just for some beautiful views over the Indian Ocean and the surrounding areas of Galay. I'm a Sri Lankan crazy jumper. This is my, my friend. Um, he's the guy on the poster that was just showing me about who jumps. It's his business, he's living to jump off this rock. Um, looks jump now. scary to me. You're going to jump now? Yes, my work is a pay. You are paid money for jump. You come back next time and I'll jump with you. Today, look, today. You can help it in my work. Tell them how safe it is. It's my job. So that's the end of our time in Gal. Short and sweet, you probably only need 24 hours to be quite honest to come and see it and wander around. Lots to do, lots to see, most of the things are in the fort area so you can do them quite quickly. Lots of things to do, uh, there's a few other things on the main street, maybe three kilometres outside town there's quite a few bars, uh, kind of surf clubs that back onto the beach, they can have a nice cold beer overlooking the sea. Yeah. Which, is... which we did last night, which took about five hours to walk there. Lucy said it's just around the corner. It's not just around the corner. No, it's it was about three kilometres. I got it completely wrong. It was my mistake. I've four got a blister too. Four kilometres. So you get Tuk Tuk into the town uh, on the main street of Gal. It's, um, as I say, four kilometres. There's plenty of bars, restaurants, local places you can eat yeah, and drink. Yeah, loads of surf schools and places to rent surfboards by the look of it 